So, flashlights can be one of the most frustrating things in the world because it's like, oh, I want to put a flashlight on my gun. But then it's like, okay, pick rail, uh, key mod, M lock, do you want what, 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 three o'clock, uh, you know, uh, whatever, six o'clock, nine o'clock, do you want it a little bit of a different mm-hmm. o'clock? <laughs> like, length. is it gonna, yeah, length, yeah. is it gonna have to fit underneath? A laser of some sort. How do you want to have it switched on and off? Is it a pressure pad? There's like a million different types of pressure pads. How are you going to run the cords? Like all that stuff. What is up, everybody? Mark on the mic. Mr. Jim to my right. And across from us, we have Chris and Liam. If you're watching on YouTube, you're going to see uh, one, two, three, four ARs on the table. Uh, three and a half. <laughs> okay, three and a half, three and a half. We, we can get to that. We can get to that. Uh, topic of conversation today, gentlemen: the Holy Trinity mm. of AR accessories. Now, Jim, you brought one, and and you mm. kind of brought it. You're it's like, not mine. None of these belong to anybody here, of course. No, yeah, no, of course not. I they just brought just, this for a friend, <laughs> asking for a friend. Um, Everybody might have an, a different idea on this, Jim. And we didn't talk. We didn't pre-plan. Not even a bit, what a the bit. Trinity is. No. So, Jim, you brought yours. You're like, I'm. I brought mine to see if I got it right. I wanted the experts to, you know, grade the setup, grade my friend's setup. Yeah. And I also was curious when we talked about the Holy Grail of of or the Holy Trinity of accessories. I was kind of curious what they were going to say, too, about like what even t- in today's day and age constitutes an accessory anymore. Like, for example, optics, you know? Right. Like, do we even call that an accessory anymore, or is it like a, uh, is it re- has it just become part of It's the like gun, it you know? is, but it's also standard at the same time. Yeah. Like, right. Yeah, it's cool if you're building like a clone or whatever, and you want to go with iron sights. But otherwise, I mean, like, looks bro, like, an, like an optic is just it's it's part of the thing. It'd be like me buying a pair of shoes and then like not the shoelaces laces. are an accessory. Right, yeah. right. I don't wear a lot of slip-ons. <laughs> <laughs> That's big, good. Big sandal That's guy. Good. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't, he hasn't gotten bitten big by the hey dude toe guy. Jim, and yeah, what? It's not negative twenty. You've got closed-toed shoes. Yeah. OSHA I know. did OSHA get after you again? <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't OSHA. That's a good question, Mark. The problem is that when we have these consistent, somewhat cold days, my feet in the sandals get kind of dry. I have really bad dry skin, as you know. You, you, and I both. Yeah. So my feet get kind of dry, and then my heels crack open. Ooh, and that's uncomfortable. Gotta, that's not. I gotta cool. like. It's I try and I try and just deal with it for a while, hands. but then I'm like. I'm like, what am I doing? I'll just wear some What boots. about uh, the pet egg? You, did you try the pet egg? I saw that on TV one time. Pet egg? Pet P-E-D. The pet P-E-D. I yeah. think. It's like, a che- it's like a cheese grater for your foot. It's basically oh, what it is. Oh, that sounds awful. No, I like Gets rid of those unsightly calluses. Oh, I, tr- I like to try and get the calluses as big as possible. Yep. Oh, interesting. The bigger the better. When it comes What's to that calluses. one? What's uh, that callus? That's what some referred to as like Glock finger. So lots Ooh. of dry fire, lots of live fire. So I mean, you can see compare them, compare them. <laughs> yeah, next to, no, I'm not flipping any double finger salute. Yeah, just yeah. Hey, everybody, <laughs> check out my Glock finger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I feel about this question. <laughs> no, Do you flip me thing. off? No, it's, it's, it's Glock. No, it's Glock just finger. my my callus, man. Oh uh, man, that is a badge of honor. Yeah, I don't have one of those. Yeah, it's, it's uh, pretty <laughs> gnarly. Mm. I want that, Jim. I want that. I want that. Maybe I need to go visit Chris at Vortex Edge. You should. You should. You yep. should dry fire more. Um, <laughs> but. I don't think I have, so that was why I was wondering. I was like, okay, we said the Trinity, but like, I have, I think you could constitute three accessories on here, you know, and then I was excluding the optic because I think that's mandatory. Um, my friend does, of course, but whatever. Anyway, uh, we'll just act like it's mine for now. But flashlight, mm-hmm. uh, suppressor, mm-hmm. yeah, that's not a must add. I don't think that's part of the Holy Trinity, but it's definitely like really cool and, and sweet. I know it doesn't get brought up a lot, but what about just like mags? See, like that's another thing is like, do you oh consider that an accessory gosh. or not? It's t- it's that's no. got to be like part, that's like a functional part of the fire. Yeah, I, th- I thinking thinking of the magazine as more of a component, right? Than it is yeah. like something that you, like an afterthought. Now, now that being said, like buy as many of these as you buy can. a lot of them. Like, buy get good a lot ones. Of them. Don't, yeah. like, don't right. get crappy ones. Yeah. So that is one of the it's. <laughs> 
that's in the same vein for me, somewhat as optics. You kind of need it to make the thing work, but there's so many options that you can go with that it becomes like an accessory because, like, there's no like one thing. Yeah. You know, or, I don't know. It's hard to and, explain. And, and most guns these days, like, I, I think back to when I first got this, uh, this Mark 18, I got it back in 2013. So I had to go through great lengths to make it like somewhat ambi. And a lot of guns now just come that way. Mm-hmm. So you think about like when you invest in an AR and what already comes in the box, one of them being at least a magazine. Yeah. Right. So what what does constitute even an accessory these days? Mm-hmm. The I magazine doesn't come this, hand stippled like this one. No. Though. True. No, no. My hands, you know, they'd be sweating. So I, mm-hmm. I figured I'd add some texture. You notice the difference? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. This gun's a little weird, though, because, like, I didn't have to do a lot to it because this gun is actually a Robinson Arms mm-hmm. XCR. So if you're if you're not watching on YouTube right now, that Sorry. is the... When we said there's three and a half, this is the half because it's not really an AR. But I didn't have to get, like, ambi safety selector or, or right. bad lever or anything like that. This came with the, you know, um, the ambidextrous controls, which is pretty cool. And, you know, then I didn't have to go and mess with, like, a different charging handle. Unfortunately, I can't get an ambi charging handle with the Robinson Arms. It's just on the left side. But it's big and giant and easy to get to. So, yeah. Um, but there's, like, you know, a sling. I don't know. Yeah. What were you guys going to say? What you guys got going well, on yours? For me... Mine, like I said, you know, this 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 thing is... I really yeah. just brought it along last minute because I was like, I want to see what they have to say. For yeah. me, it's a uh, light optic sling. So, light optic sling? Yep. Not in that order. I think optic is number one. Like, you can't shoot what you can't see. You can't yeah. shoot what you can't aim at. Uh, light would be two just because you can't shoot what you can't see. And then sling is three because it holds the gun to you, and that's really important. Um, you know, if you need to go hands-on with something else or you need to um, – you know, just if you're walking or standing around, you don't want to have this thing in your hands all the time. You can drape it. So um, not only is it like a comfort thing, but it's also a security thing. It holds the gun to you, which is really important. So like this one I have set up kind of in that vein, super simple. I mean, other than the the forend is kind of funky because it's got this integrated bipod. But as far as accessories go, it's really simple. It's just a one to six, a sling and a light with a clicky clack. So um, pretty much as simple as you can go, or as opposed to this one that's pretty much decked out mm, as much as you can do. Um, yeah, it has a lot of different stuff, lights, lasers, pressure pads, ARDs, all the good stuff. So, you know, but if you kind of look at these two, these two are not mine, but, you know, a friend's. Exactly. Uh, set up very similar um, in, in terms of, of what's there. So I can think this is kind of like the foundation of, if you got an AR and you invested in an AR, well, you should probably invest in those three things first. Yeah, I think I'm. I think we're going to see a trend with all of like you know whenever we like highlight a gun, it'll be Jim's friends X or <laughs> Liam's friends <laughs> Y. My cousin. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you <laughs> never know. Cousin. You Chris, never know these. <laughs> Chris is putting his cousin, cousin in. Yeah, but I got a oh lot. Oh my gosh, though. I got friends, a lot of just... cousins, so you never know which one. Yeah, that's true. And they could be anywhere. Throwing oh, yeah. our friends under the bus. But you never know. It's like all of a sudden, you know, one thing that was perfectly constitutional and legal, all of a sudden just like they just decide some non governing body just decides, nope. But then Shut everyone down. realizes that they can't actually decide anything. And so then they're like, no, we unnoped or we noped <laughs> your nope. We yeah. noped your nope. You're unnoped. Double nope. Double nope. Anyway. Um, yeah. I would, I would, Agree with uh, I would agree with what Liam said. I'd be curious to see what Chris has to say. But the, the nice thing about ARs and well, these this category of firearms is how modular they are. Because this gun that you said is is set up fairly simply, you could make it super kind of pimped out like that other For one sure. that you got there. For very sure. very easily. It's a matter of just bolting things onto Picatinny rail sections and stuff like that. And yeah. all of a sudden, it's the one that has all the accoutrement, and that's the simple one. For sure. So you can always, like, if you have a nice basis, you can add on to it and try different things. What's what's on Christopher's? Uh, well, I have uh, one to six on ADM mounts, and then I have a 12 o'clock um, defender, C, uh, D- defender dot on here that I have come to like very much. So see, like backing up, like my my holy trinity. I, I think about what wouldn't come in the box and what you would need to immediately become like uh, proficient and be able to move the gun from A to B without like 
flagging or do anything silly with the muzzle. Mm-hmm. So I my 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 top three would probably be like starting right off the bat. What makes it go bang? Like ammo and mags. Like get a lot of it. Get train, and that will of course inform your ability to train, get classes, get out and like and become proficient with the platform in general. Right. And then of course, like a close second would probably be an optic system, something that like to Liam's point, like allows you, you can't, it doesn't matter what context home defense or, or if you're hunting or whatever the case may be, you're, you're getting the gun for like get an optic system that, that matches your, your mission set or whatever your, your, whatever gap you're looking to fill. Right. So in, in my case, I know I can stretch the, the legs on this thing a little more and I have the, the opportunities to do that here working working before vortex so the one to six was an easy choice to make for me and plus like having the the 12 o'clock red dot makes it really cool for shooting under nods and and it makes picking up that red dot and in in a, in a quick change situation like really easy i love how chris is like gaming the system of kind of the you know we set the like you know holy trinity three things but he's like no this is an optic system singular therefore it's i one. can i can it's have one. two it optics yeah. it's, it's just one, one system mm-hmm. yes Yes, and then and then yeah, I, I my third would be sling too. Just thinking about like you know, just having control over the gun, um, having an efficient way to get it from A to B, and not like holding it weird or you know, just having control over it. I guess, and we've we've seen how like slings can be used to retain guns in like really bad situations. So I think, I think that's that's something super important. Um, and I've I've used every about every gamut of type of sling, any every type of like connection system to the gun and i think just having like good uh solid sling that has some solid structure like this flat line padded sling that i run and just with i, I like qds personally um that's kind of what i've landed on here recently that i i just really dig they've never failed me um, i know some people like will say like oh they come off or whatever but, but mine have been pretty solid and i don't i don't haven't had those issues so yeah so for me it would be ammo mags and training which in my opinion are <laughs> are one ish oh, okay. right and then you have like a, a good <laughs> there he goes again a good optic <laughs> s- system right and then having a means to retain the gun and then and for me that's like, so having a solid sling yeah if you yeah. say ammo megs and training really fast it becomes one thing ammo megs training yeah amt you know Oops. chris was probably always really hard to play with at recess because like you'd be picking teams and he'd be like uh i'll take chris he'd be like okay but my boys are also a package deal and he'd be like <laughs> Well, we're, okay. yeah, we're a package deal like Step Brothers in that interview. Yeah, yeah. 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 my boys gotta come with me. You know what I mean? uh, um, the sling, I would say, is one that, and I, I don't say this to be like you know holier than thou or whatever that phrase is. You know, where like you think you're better than someone, you know, if you have a sling. But, but a lot of people who just get into guns, like they just start buying an AR, multiple ARs, or whatever it is, um, which, good on you, that's awesome. They kind of uh, they kind of forego the sling. And I've seen people forego it for, like, a while, actually. They'll, they get, they'll get lots of other stuff. They'll go to the range. They'll shoot. And they, they won't get a sling. And it takes a while. Um, and, and I don't know if that's, you know, because, like, I was even in that position for a while where I had a bunch of guns and I really didn't have any slings for them. And I guess it was because I was like, well, uh, taking them to the range, pulling them out of the bag, setting up on a bench or something like yeah. that, and shoot them, and then you put them away and you go home. Which in that case, I guess, yeah, you don't fully need a sling. But even in that case, I can see where it's like having a sling is never a bad thing. Like it's never a detriment. And you can usually tell like if we see someone come into like an edge class and they already have a sling set up. You know that there's like a, a level of, of maybe understanding or at least um, open mindedness in, in that person to the fact that like moving with a firearm uh, is not something that you should like take super lightly. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I just think like with, when when you purchase a pistol, like for the most part, like if you if you plan on carrying it or even like for home defense purposes like you're gonna like the automatic peering there is like get a good holster right, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. so i i consider like the sling to be akin to like having a retention system in the same way that you would consider pi- holster with pistol like this is like the way that i keep it attached to myself yeah it, it, whether it be i don't know man like you know going through houses and like jumping and in, in, in getting around stuff or or simply just like administratively like while, while i fill my mags like i'm not gonna i'm gonna make sure it's like pointed in a safe direction 
and and attach to me so then i don't like flag my buddies and like to your point like i think the 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 most common experience that people have with these is like they'll they'll take their case or their gun bag they'll go to the firing line uncase it you know do whatever shooting they're going to do recase it and then it goes back in the trunk right then goes back to the safe mm-hmm. right where where like and, and, and to your point like where you see like you're like oh this guy like actually uncases this stuff and like moves around with it and you know you, mm-hmm. whether it be innocently enough like they they might have a sling system might not be an ideal one but they have something and at least it's a consideration right, right. it's a it's a jumping off point where we can work with people yeah well and i think what you're describing, you know, that scenario where you're going to the range, yes, that's how it's being used 99.999% of the time, right? right? But I think a lot of people, you know, get an AR within the back of their head, like, well, if I need it for a defensive situation, then I'll have it for that uh, scenario. But then also, like, that's a very dynamic scenario mm-hmm. where, yes, some form of retention uh very beneficial. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes. like, even what Chris said, if you're, even if you're just standing around, like, if you're just oh standing around, why do you want to have one hand, at least one hand dedicated to the gun at all times? Yeah. Like, it's well, the, then if you're always having to set it down, pick it yeah. up, set it down, pick it up, and then, you know, like, it's nice having two hands, but still being able to have your gun on you and not having to be like, oh, let me go set it down, then, like, move something, and then have to go run back and grab my gun again. Mm-hmm. Even if you're on the range, it's just... um yeah, I mean, it would be so much easier if we were all standing with our rifles slung and doing this podcast instead of sitting here with them set down <laughs> on the table even, you know what I mean? Like, it's just having them on a sling uh, is so much better. And, and I don't, like, maybe maybe part of it is, I remember, like, the first time I, I sort of wore my gun, you know, via a sling. Like, you feel a little bit funny, you know? Uh, if you if you really think back to it, of course, there's people who have done it like it's their it's their job or or they do it all the time. But like, we mean it feels funny. It's you know whatever. But like it does feel funny the very first time you do it because you're like, okay, I'm wearing a gun. Um, all I can and, think about Jim is like some Hollywood scenario where like, oh, who are you wearing? You're like, oh, I'm wearing the Robinson. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but and and maybe you feel a little larpy. You know, because you're like, oh, okay, well, I'm I'm just at the range right now, you know, but I'm like wearing a gun, so like people are gonna look at me and think like, oh, you know, cool dude, like where's the where's the coup, you know, like where's your where's the boogaloo, bro? Yeah, <laughs> but it's it's I don't know, like if it's not already normalized, like it needs to be fully normalized. Just having a sling, it's, it's yeah. so much more comfortable just having your gun with you in any scenario. Uh, when it's just got a sling on it. The other thing is, too, it's probably the most affordable accessory that yeah. we're talking about, right? Like, yeah. this is something that's not going to break your bank. And to, you know, Chris's point earlier is talking about QDs and attachment um, systems. Uh, I would almost invest not more, but maybe similar in terms of monetary value into that. Um, see, I also like QDs, but I buy really nice ones because a Look lot of you. QDs um are not made to spec and so like you know if you buy kind of cheap ones off amazon or whatever they may not fit they may not hold so um i actually have started to use these i really like these wire loops um they're a little bit more universal um you can fit them around a rail section or whatever and they seem to be more secure than a qd but kind of is it on it i can you quick detach yeah so you just um you just push this one, so like, so you've got a QD on. It's sort of QD, but the bus it's, not, it's, it's not like super fast, but you know this can go anywhere. So this could live through the rail section. It could live through MD. That's an MD. It's MD. Yeah, yeah, medium, mm-hmm. medium D. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> I've just really started to go to these for a lot of my guns. I really, I like them a lot. Um, they seem it's pretty to slick. They seem yeah. to hold a little bit and last a little longer than the QDs do. But hmm. I think that kind of goes with any of these accessories we talked about, like flashlight mount, uh, optic mount. Like these are things that you got to in, kind of invest in some quality stuff or yeah, it's, you know, you well, have an issue with them. If you don't, what will happen is you'll have saved like 50 bucks, mm-hmm. you know, the first time. But then when the cheap thing that you bought breaks, you have to buy it again. And then you've eaten into your fifty dollars of savings by having to buy something again and yep. again and again. Um, Not to w- mention the hassle and the time. And yeah, the, it's yeah. a pain in the butt. Buy once, cry once. It's it's, it's true. Um, what do you guys? What's the uh, what's the 
the real rule of thumb. I actually don't think that I still know it. Sometimes I think I know it, and then I'll get something, and I'm like, oh, wait. What's the general rule of thumb on um, QDs that are fixed versus ones that are free swivel? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, anti rotational some, ones. Yeah, some some of them will just rotate all around and whatever, yeah. and then the other ones you actually have to actually like push the button and then clock it to whatever position that you want. Is your rear one supposed to be the non rotational one, or is your front one? I I kind of prefer the rear one to be somewhat like staying put. I don't okay, like yep. that one to rotate a lot. Um, in fact, like I'll put it in a way where, it, if if you look on on my stock here, like it's canned forward. Yeah. So it's almost forcing the sling to kind of stay on my shoulder. Whereas mm-hmm. I, I, I really don't like having that rotation. I, I feel that doing it this way, um, even when I'm running around and I'm like football carrying the, 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 the gun and just running f- full bore, like it stays on me. And that's what that's another reason why like I think it's important to have like a good sling that has some like somewhat some structure to it. Yeah. Not being like really flexible or, or flimsy. Um, they just stay put when you're moving around. Um but yeah, yeah, to your point, like I, I, I would have I, I don't know. Me personally I, I don't like the free spinning. Yeah, I don't like TVs. uh I like anti-rotational on both points. Both uh, points. Yeah, I want that thing to be exactly how I set it up. Um, the the rear one seems to be the one that will get twisted more often if it is free spinning. So to Chris's point, that's that's probably yeah. the one. If you're gonna go with one, that's the one to go to. Um, and kind of also what Chris was talking about, some good structure and padding in the sling is good. I'm not a fan of bungee in sling. Um, you really want that thing to be more rigid you don't want to have a lot of given that uh personally for me i don't want the thing bouncing around i want it to be very stable and, and really secure you guys both have two point quick adjustable ones mm-hmm. uh three point is pretty ancient at this point right yeah yeah and i haven't seen a three point something in a very long time yeah and single point is kind of like a pdw thing like I think so, that's only because right? of the rail space. I think if you could have a two point sling on PDW stuff, you would. Right. Um, right. Yeah. yeah. And, and that and, and that's really kind of like a compromise. Really, right. The yeah. fact that it's a you know. Yeah. Two point just gives you that that proper balance, whereas a one point's got one contact, and you, the leverage of the gun is going to be all funky and yeah. floppy. I mean, you still kind of if you're running with it, right? You still have mm. to have a hand on it. You yeah. Know, whereas yeah, like yeah, yeah. with this, if you cinch that thing up real tight, you can. Yep. Or if you go to do like you know like transitions or like if you go to work on something that requires both hands like a you know God forbid a casualty or like literally any other task that requires like hands right like having the ability to make sure that this thing is attached to you securely um, adjustable slings are cool you can just like cinch it down and now you know it's not going anywhere whereas my experience with with single sling uh, you know during during um, the global war on terror is like yeah it was, it was cool it was really fast and like stayed out of the way relatively speaking but man when it came time to like get over stuff like interact with your environment <laughs> use your hands and, and i mean that thing is just it just turned you just yeah, your gun just, just like clack, clack, just clack. all over <laughs> yeah place. yeah and that i mean you know they created a market with those things for like 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 belt attached or like pack attached like um re- retention mm. I, I don't know i forget what they called um i used to have one on my belt so i knew that if i needed to get the the gun out of the way i just clicked into that but yeah that the That's need for that kind goes of way if you point. have yeah <laughs> right it's like it's like the guy who created you know the band-aids also created the cheese grater you know what i mean so it's like <laughs> you're creating your own demand <laughs> that sort of stuff the other thing too like with the two point is if one of these fails it's still kind of attached to you or yeah. you could still retrieve it because it's still on you oh with one end attached to the gun like if it's a one point and it's gone it's gone right yeah Here's, i also yeah. like having options with with mounting hardware like i I have yeah. like I have one here, kind of by the pistol grip, a uh, little magpole kind of oh, key yeah, attachment, the, uh, yep. end plate. Yep, and, and, a, and a lot of a lot of rails these days. Like this is this is an old wrist too. Like I said from yeah. like 2013, a lot of these will actually have the slots for QDs kind of built into them. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Like the knights, the knights, yep. my knights rail has this yeah. in here. So um, you have options kind of organically yeah. with the gun. That, um, and then a lot of stocks also come like this is a B5 stop mod that it has on either side. It's got QD slings. I know a lot of Magpul yeah, slings already come on, come come with the QD attachment points. So mm-hmm. guns are just going to come. It's nice to be able to move them around. Yeah, like you, sure, it, yeah. It's not a bad thing if you have uh, at all, if you have more than one QD attachment point. And you can get ones. I mean, there's so many people who make them now. They go into M-Lock. They go into key mod. They yep. attach to pick rail. They, you know, you can get you know, yeah. end plates to, to go with your castle nut, all that stuff. Yeah, 
for well, sure. Chris, in, in, yes. the, in the spirit of you adding uh, 19 accessories onto your one accessory, your mag has a, some accessories on the mag it here. Does, which yeah. Jim, that makes it one accessory. That by is the way. still a system. It's, mm, yeah, it's his yeah, mag yeah. system. Yeah, system. Yep. What do you got? What do you got going on there? That's so, uh, that's like the new hot word. Yes. It's not new. It's not a new hot <laughs> word, but it's just it's been a hot word for yep. a long time. System. system. Yeah. So on most of my weapon system, most on most of my magazines, especially what I would consider like my my loadout stuff, like they are all, they're all having these uh, mag pods on them. And, th- and I mean that's th- that's a company who makes some good, uh, really good buddy, really good guy at uh, uh, the Georgia area named Shane uh, Shane King. Shout out to Shane, but um, yeah, he uh, he makes these really cool mag pods. I think that um, a they, they dispel a lot of the uh, you know the old information that if you put a mag on the ground, like your gun's gonna blow up. Like that's what I was talking. Oh yeah, on. it's gonna cause malfunction. Right, in I, magazine. Yeah. I have shot. I've shot a couple rounds over the last twenty years through ARs, and I've yet to see a, a malfunction <laughs> specifically relating to you know putting my mag on the ground. So, um, I think that it gives you a lot of stability. It gives you a little more surface area to kind of stabilize the gun when you when you do shoot in the prone. Uh, and secondly, I, I feel like again, you know, one of the reasons I add texture because I'm even sitting here like my hands are sweating. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm pretty sweaty like always. But also having the mag pods get, just gives you something more to like reference and, and pull out of a mag. Oh, quit, interesting. You know, sure, out yeah. Of a pouch and you know they just just help with load procedure and reloading the gun as well. So they, it, it, there's a lot of benefits to having these. Not not required, of course. You know there are plenty of people who run without or run metal mags for you know for which like the mag pod mag pod obviously doesn't exist. But it's a really really nice nice to have i, I mm-hmm. would say for sure and it's it's quality they don't i have yet to break one in all the ones i've dropped um and then you know these these gen threes also come with this little tool slot so like i get to keep a little tool on here you know for zeroing and adjusting you know optics and stuff like that look at you so, ah. and, and that that i mean you can see how securely that stays in there if you want to check that out may i may yeah, i absolutely. try to remove your the yeah, tool? yeah please do Oh, Here you go. I can't. I can't do it. Just kidding. It's just uh, his finger, your fingers are bleeding. No, I know that was a quote from Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want that scene. I want that. <laughs> Jeff, you look like a strong young pup. Why don't you try and give that a tear? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. So I mean, multi multifunctional. You know, you, you, it has a little bit of storage and stabilizes the gun when you're in the prone, like I said, and makes yeah. it makes it easy to grip out yeah. of a pouch. Yeah. Sure. Can we uh, can we go lights? That was a universally, I think, agreed upon Trinity item. Yeah. yeah. Because, and and everybody everybody here is repping a different light. A different set, if you will. Repping a different, a different set. set. Oh, man. Mm. Um, but I will say, they're all super quality. They are all good quality. 100%. We all have, uh, we all have ba- the same brand end cap. Uh, There's yeah. something, right? Well, not you, you with your clicky click. Uh, proprietary. Uh, so, <laughs> lights. Yep. Very Lights. important. Um, you guys mentioned it. Can't shoot what you can't see. Mm-hmm. Um, now, in daytime, you can see, but it's not always daytime. Especially, I don't know when this is going to release, Mark, But so I don't mean to, to date us, but at the time that we're recording, there pretty much is no daylight. <laughs> this is true. At least... Yes, we it's go dark. to work in the dark and we leave, leave work in the dark. The podcast studio has yes. been moved yeah. to Alaska, apparently. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, it's uh, the daylight that, that does exist, apparently, um, is while we are while we are indoors working. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, so flashlights. Lots. Lots of options. Yes. Lots of options. Nauseating. Lots of, lots of different mounting solutions. For sure. Switches, tail caps, outputs. Flashlights words. can be <laughs> yeah, yeah. words. So, Flashlights can be one of the most frustrating things in the world. Because it's like, oh, I want to put a flashlight on my gun. But then it's like, okay, pick rail, uh, key mod, M lock. Do you want what what three o'clock, uh, you know, uh, whatever six o'clock, nine o'clock? Do you want it a little bit of a different mm-hmm. o'clock? <laughs> like, length. is it gonna? Yeah, length. Yeah. Is it gonna have to fit underneath a laser of some sort? How do you want to have it switched on and off? Is it a pressure pad? There's like a million different types of pressure pads. How are you gonna run the cords? Like all that stuff. It's yeah. It is not. There's a lot of information out there. I think the as basic as I can make it. Uh, lumens aren't everything. Uh, candela and lumens is important. So lumens is just brightness. Candela is how far that light's being thrown. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So 
you know, it can have a million lumens, but if it has no throw, then what's the point? It's kind of like a porch light. It's just, mm-hmm. you know. So I think finding a good balance there uh, is really important. Uh, like I said, we're all running super high quality lights. That's important. Um, you know, they're not going to break. They're not going to uh, blow up like some lights have been known to do. Um, Look, I'm pretty sure they fixed that, right? We'll see. Um, You're still with us, so that's yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he's, got do it. <laughs> he's got a light. <laughs> One thing I really liked uh, in in the lights that I run is the ability to have dual fuel. Um, so being able to have a rechargeable battery, but also have the ability to just throw two um, CRs in there is really nice. That is uh, nice. Because, you know, you never know if you're going to be able to actually recharge your batteries or not or how long that takes. So being yeah. able to, to run both. Um, both of mine are set up on M-Lock. Uh, one has a switch, one doesn't. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of really dictated by your gun how you want to set it up. I prefer mine kind of you know, in the three to nine, uh, o'clock position, a little bit offset. Um, but yeah, I'm running mostly cloud lights now. I know Chris likes mod lights. Yeah, it depends. I mean, for my pistol lights, they still have surefire because that's, mm-hmm. that's what all my, my holsters, holsters are yeah. cut for. And, uh, oh, I'm not about yeah. to re, you know, reinvest in, in new, um, <laughs> holsters for all my stuff, but yeah. Well, I would, I would say that's also a pretty good light too. Yeah. It oh, is. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. they, and big fans of their cans. So, Obviously, um, but yeah, I, I run my lights on all my rifles. Um, all, yeah, all all of my lights sit on ADM mounts, and I just feel with this one, it gets to it's kind of a cantilever, and you can see even with a short body, it's still getting the light pretty far um, yeah. ahead of not ahead, but in line with the can, so I get more throwdown range out of my model. You don't light. have a big shadow, basically, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Suppressor or as much of one. And then I've got an HRF Concepts ramp. Um, which just makes it a little easier to find and makes it a little more definitive when oh, sure. you're running the, the, the switch. Um, and, and that's just a mod button. So the, like HRF just makes the outer shell mm-hmm. that clamps the switch to the, to the rail. And then you just buy a standard mod light but, or a mod button, and that, that just c- kind of gets held in place at an angle. And I, I just feel like for my hands, it's just really easy to find. Otherwise, I can just roll my thumb over and not really change much about my grip, and I have to like really search for the light yeah. not not have any in these with the light or anything like that yeah i've running i'm running the overbore um swivel on mine which is cool because it can adjust the angle oh wow so um you know if i were to switch the setup up a little bit and i wanted to run it tighter or further away because of the laser or something that's really easy um i like running a single um a single lead switch up here because I don't like to have a switch that has a laser and a white light activation, just so I don't ND one or the other. So I actually roll mine on a pressure pad for my laser over oh, here. Oh, that's over there. Okay. Yeah. I was like, so it's both? really deliberately like different hand positions, um, which I, I really like. Yep. Um, but yeah, it, and lights are just, there's so many different lights, so many different options for lights. But how many times have you guys switched up your light <laughs> setup and your pressure pad setup and your the way that your cords are run and the mounts that you? How many? <laughs> like honestly, can I can it be counted a lot. But once I found a setup I liked, I kind of set up all my guns that way. So yeah, it's, same here. It's very basically the same on everything. Yep. Yeah. And I like to keep continuity across the mm-hmm. board. To your point, like I just like to be able to like. I can pick one out of the safe, and they're going to feel and work and have the same controls kind of across the board. Yep. yep. Um, the light that I have on my AR is <coughs> set up very simply, like Liam's here that's closest to us. With a clicker on the back? Yeah. Not a pressure pad? You just got the button <laughs> on the rear? I was like, when I want to turn it on, I'll just turn it on. Sure. Yeah. I and mean, that's that's a thing. And I and I actually have been, I've been kind of playing with that idea a little bit more lately, too, just because... I found that a lot of switches just aren't very good or aren't durable. And that's the thing that usually fails first is the switch. And I'm kind of sick of buying switches. So I've been experimenting with running the just running the on the side and yeah. just running tail buying cap lots again. Of, buying lots of switches adds up. It's terrible. And plus, like, <laughs> it can. I, I went through, you know, the frustration of getting, you know, going through switches and stuff for a while because, um, you know, it was like, okay, if you're running a laser. It was like, do I want to have one pressure pad that controls the light and the laser, which is a separate purchase, you know? And then you, okay, all right, well, I get that set up. I get it put on my gun, find the right spot on the rail for it, run all the 
cordage and stuff like that. Okay, I don't like that. So now I'm going to get two different pressure pads, each one having a different, you know, whatever cord yep. end, uh, because they don't. I'm not aware of a laser at this point. There probably is one, maybe by now, but I'm not aware of one that uses the same lead as like the Surefire back cap. Well, wouldn't you know, that be something? There maybe uh, there isn't. There one right is now. one company that makes IR heads for Surefire. Uh, IR laser heads for oh, the Surefire yeah. bodies. Oh yeah, that's right. So that's like your one hack. Or uh, yeah. But yeah, then it's like, okay, well, then you had to go and buy two switches. Exactly. And then you're like, well, I don't like those switches. So then you go and you buy two other ones. And it's mm-hmm. like, it can add up really fast. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, you yeah. don't know till you know, too, unless you get, like, have buddies whose stuff you can try. But you don't know till you know, because there's no, like, I'd love to know if you guys agree with me on this. There's no definitive way that you have to set up your flashlight, have to mount it, and have to, to switch it. No. Because there's lots of people out there running carbines extremely effectively with white lights and lasers and you could take two of them next to each other and they would look totally different in how they're set up but they're both running completely effectively it's like very user specific i think that's one of the cool things about ars in general is just how customizable they are and how you can fit the gun to you yeah like i I mean certainly you can you can get on youtube and like try to clone someone's gun i I have people who dm me all the time like oh i really dig your mark 18 and they're like Right, man, but you like you still got to fit it to you at the end of the day. Like mm-hmm. what yeah. what works for me isn't going to work for everyone else. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like Chris and I's guns are set up similar, but also pretty different at yeah. the same time. You know, but we shoot very similarly, right? Um, but they're they're definitely set up differently. Mm-hmm. What about I mean, right or left side? You know, I mean, actually, so Liam, you've got one. Yep, I've got on one on the on the right and one on the left. So personally, my preference still right now is on the the right side of the gun. Um, I like to keep this side of the gun pretty clean because that's where the bulk of my hand is going to be. Okay. On the gun. Um, and you're a right-handed. And I'm shooter. a right-handed shooter. Yeah. So, but this um, this is just on this side because it's again it's where my hand is going to sit, so I can activate that switch yeah. very mm-hmm. easily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. This though, um, you know, if I, I were to have to switch hands, not as easy to activate as this because this is just pretty much just at twelve o'clock, so it's kind of ambi mm-hmm. in a sense. Um, but again, because switches are kind of iffy still, um, and that's not to say like they're all bad, but I've just had bad luck with switches, so I'm trying something new here. It's it can happen. I mean, when you think about what the switch is, like a pressure pad with a cord going to, I mean, it's it's not. It shouldn't be shocking that it can happen where sometimes they don't function the way right. they want. Right. It's electricity. To. Like, it's a mystery, right? <sighs> I still <laughs> think no one actually understands it. For sure. I don't I don't remember much of the physics unit on electricity, but I do remember, Jim, that I got the highest grade in the class on the test. Did you wow. really? It was the, only, uni- you, it was the only physics unit that made sense to you me. You and the physics mm. teacher still friends? Ah, uh, he didn't care for me. <laughs> he didn't care for me. Um, I think he thought I was kind of like a, like a snot-nosed kid. Well, number one, I wasn't great at physics, but um, I also missed the first week of school because I was uh, fly fishing for Pretty silvers up up in, up in Alaska <laughs> That's a out of Yakutat, and uh, I told him that, and he was also like a fly fisherman. But I think he he was jealous. I think he was jealous. Yeah, yeah. he was definitely jealous. Like, I'm, I'm at school, and you're. Doing the thing you love yeah. to do. Yeah. It makes sense. Honestly, a really good reason to not be there, though. I think so. That's, yeah. It seemed, it seemed very valid to me. Yeah. Um, electricity, phys- though, yeah. Resistors and Our stuff Our physics like teacher taught us it. I actually remember, I did really well in high school, but I forgot everything that he taught me because he taught using peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> like, it, it was brilliant. It actually worked really well. But then I got, you know, I got out and, like, didn't keep eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, I guess. And so I forgot <laughs> oh, no. everything I knew about electricity. <laughs> a lot of good debt, dude. Yeah. 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 It's too bad. Um, I think it's cool that three of the four guns on the table, three and a half, whatever, um, have LPVOs on them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm the only one uh, who brought a representative without one. Right. But that, I mean, it's very, very specific to this, uh, this gun's application. But... Uh, yeah, a little I, power variable. Yeah, I think it's, I still think, you know, for how much you pay for them, they're the most versatile optic that you can buy for this kind of gun. 
Um, and I and like, what would you say? Like, when you're saying this kind of gun, like you're saying it's yeah, like a car a carbine setup that's that isn't um, that doesn't necessarily have a specific purpose. Gotcha. So yep. like, hunting rifles are very specifically application driven. Um, whereas ARs kind of fit a niche that's more generalized, um, in my opinion, like they can do a lot of things really well. Um, and so like for me talking about the, the sighting system, as Chris calls it, um, having the ability to go one X to six X, um, is super, um, it just adds a lot of versatility to Mm -hmm. how you can use the gun. Um, you can reach out, you can use it for, um, just looking at things, um, but the ability to have one X is uh, shooting really fast up close, really, really cool. Yep. I'd yeah, say it, I, d- I don't have, uh, I don't have my friend's ARs with me right now, but right. he's got one kind of similar to what you have here, Jim. Uh, and he has a red dot on it. Do you have a Robinson XCR? No, but I'm just saying, um, yeah, I mean, cool. sorry, your friend he's, has my friend XCR? has a, no, it's just, Somewhat similar. And, and then he also has one that's more of like your general carving, which has a uh, LPVL on it. Yeah. yeah this, I, got, I got red dots on, on some of mine, but for the vast majority of, of mine, they all have some form of variable power, variable yeah. power optic. Mm-hmm. Red dots have always been, and I think they'll always will be the easy button. Because mm-hmm. like you get a gun, a red dot's fairly inexpensive. It comes with the mount, you slap it on, you get it zeroed, you're done. Yep. You know. But for pushing the easy button, well, you get one of two things. You either get if that's what the if the purpose of the setup was to always be compact, <clears throat> excuse me, fairly uh, fairly low drag and uh, great up close and fast. Then great, you got it, and you got to also have the easier thing to to set up and, and get going with. But you know, if you have a more general purpose firearm, then that's where it's like, okay, well, we made some compromises by going the easy route. Um, but the nice thing with red dots is that you can get a high quality one for less than you can get a high quality low power variable for, which is yeah. a, it, understandably so because it has less going on. Less, it's super simple. Yeah. Um, so if you just need to get your AR up and running, but yeah, the low power variable, I mean, a real radical holdovers, magnification, I mean, turrets you can spin with your fingers. Yep. And that's not to say that you can't run a low power variable optic like pretty aggressively up close. Like I remember for like the first six year or six months I had this job, um, I really forced myself into a one to six to see, hey, what 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 can I squeeze out of this thing? And man, like mm-hmm. on a true one X with a with a nice bright center dot like like the one to six, like yeah, squeezing every bit of performance out of that thing was was a lot of fun. Yeah, I think the biggest problem with optics i'll say all optics is that so many people make snap judgments looking through optics completely out of context yep for like 30 seconds and so they'll be like they hold a low power variable up to their eye they spin it to one x they didn't set the diopter they're in their living room and they're like i don't like it and it's like dude you know, I mean, it go t- outside. Like, <laughs> <laughs> go outside. Yeah, shoot it. Go try outside. it for like longer than one thirty-round mag. You know, like you gotta, you gotta let yourself get used to stuff. Yep. Um, you know, I mean, if you, uh, if you, if you go out, like if you trade in your car and you get a new car, it's like you gotta like break it in, like get used yeah. to it, like where the buttons are. Like it's easy to figure out, like, it's easy to like not like something new because it's new and you're not used to it and to think it's a problem of that thing. And when in reality, it's actually like simply a problem of you just not understanding it yet. Yeah. Right, yeah. There's a lot of that. And I, and I feel also like when you tie your identity and the, ident- the identity of what that you want the gun to be to like something you saw on YouTube yeah, or whatever like ex personality yeah. you saw in a movie, or or even on Instagram, or whatever the case may be. Like, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. And like you, you mentioned earlier, I wanted I, I wanted to piggyback on what you said earlier about like community, like having buddies that have oh, yeah. different setups, like being able to test, like so to speak, like, test before you buy. I think that's one of the cool things that we actually do down at Edge is like we have a wide variety of setups that you can come and like see the instructors run and like we get asked all the time oh can i look through that and i'm like yeah dude fire a whole mag to it let's see like you know check it out um so like that whole 
buy before you buy like it's super important and i think that's that's one of the main kind of cool things about the community we're in like you got buddies you know or acquaintances that have different setups like hey let me check that out real quick let's go to the rings mm-hmm. can i try that really fast yeah so we make better informed decisions by actually getting hands on and applying um you know shooting to those contexts or filling whatever gap or mission set that you want and and so we get to test stuff a little more and if you don't have friends which is, you know, unfortunate. Like, maybe go to a range. Look, it happens. Yeah, it happens. Or a therapist. You know, you know yeah. yeah. Your Find mom or dad or whatever. Got a lot of guns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go go to a range that rents guns. Because I, I can guarantee they'll have different optics and stuff on their rental guns. Like, yeah. I, I used to work at a range that, that had a bunch of different setups on a wide variety of, of ARs. Like, pay your... Like, I, I used to work at a range where you paid 50 bucks and they let you try any AR as long as you bought... The ammo mm-hmm. and so how cool is that right like you can you can go there like oh i want to try the you know the one six or just the one or, or the one red dot that and then you get you get to make your own informed decision on what's going to fit you and your and whatever need that you identify yeah so i think i think that's one of the cool things about our community like we we tend to rally around each other and like welcome people into this into this hobby and yeah and discipline to, with, with like opening arms like yeah yeah dude like here try this like you know here's a mag like like far away man you get a get a feel for it i think that's one of the cool cool things that we we also do really well down there for tech's edge yeah. yeah i think coming back to something you said jim like the lpvo market has gotten a lot more affordable and as it's gotten more affordable the quality has actually gone up too quite a bit yeah so like you can get into something like this which is the, the venom one to six and with a mount for you know pretty a pretty good price that's not super gonna break your bank and you have a ton of capability through it, but it's also a really high quality piece of glass mm-hmm. um, for what, you know for what it is. And you get a nice true one X, a pretty wide field of view on the one X, um, and a pretty decently bright uh, reticle as well. And so you can run with like you know something that Chris says with training, you can run these optics as fast as red dots yep. with the added capability of reaching out. So mm-hmm. for me, yeah, again, still like. Pound for pound, this is this is the way. Never, for- yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I never, I mean, never poo-hoo the idea of using something affordable. It's, it's just, right. I'll never, ever forget, especially when it comes to optics and gear. I, oh, anything, really. I'll never forget Mark and I going on our cooster hunt. I probably brought it up here so many times on the podcast, but I'll never forget that Mark and I went out with our Razor UHDs, and we were all just like, puffing our chests out we're gonna see everything it'll be basically like the next best thing to thermal they'll just pop out and there was a guy with a set of crossfire 12 by 50s our most entry-level binocular the opposite side of the spectrum in the vortex lineup of the razor uhd and he was absolutely spotting circles around us (laughs) the guy it was like the guy all he had to do was open his eyes and he would see coos deer and we we we'd be like where where are they you know and of course we like don't have our our method of like pointing out like what cactus you're looking at when you're looking at a (laughs) sea of like five million cactuses you know but like at the same time he'd be like no it's right there and you'd be like oh i'm just not as good at this as you are very clearly (laughs) like i just i'm not i can't that was all skill well i mean chris included training in his holy trinity and that's the equivalent of training like anytime you go to like a new environment when you're hunting like i mean it can take a couple days i'd say park particularly with coos deer and probably still not as good as him with his 12 crossfires but to get like your game eye right yeah i mean he's trained in that environment to spot exactly what he's looking for whether it's color shape scale contrast like all those things it's training and i think it's actually an interesting parallel to draw like you can have the most high speed whatever but you know, and and that's what I'm. I need to spend more time with you guys down there because I'm. I mean, along, guilty of not training with you guys. Yep. Along the same vein of like accessories, I, I think that we like as as the end user get to be like, you know, either a really good accessory to the gun because I mean it's not going to go bang like on its own. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, like, I guess that to be number four for me. You. <laughs> you. You are the accessory. <laughs> you are the, the <laughs> ultimate accessory. That sounds like a motivational picture on the wall. Yeah. We should make one. Print it out. 
apparel. <laughs> just Chris <laughs> all in the ultimate you accessory. <laughs> or, or yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it'd be like another. Ver- it'd be like the gun and shooting world version of the human element commercials mm-hmm. that I always used to play. <laughs> that I never actually knew what they were for. <laughs> it was like the human element, and I'd be like, "Wow, am I supposed to buy something, or am I just supposed to like be inspired?" And you just spent a lot of money for it on that. <laughs> Chris, I'm gonna go down and shoot with you guys, and I'll be like, "Ah, oh, Chris, my me isn't working. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> something's off." I'm me. Off. <laughs> Me's all effed up. Yeah. <laughs> Take you up on it. Anything else, Jim? No, I mean I did. Uh, I did snooze up the red dot setup a little bit with a magnifier. Mm-hmm. Magnifier is definitely in accessory territory for me. Like I said, when I came into this, I was like, I'm. I'm just not even gonna. I'm not even gonna consider the optic an accessory. I think it's pretty much a part of that makes the 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 gun functional. But with a red dot, a magnifier is a fantastic accessory. I don't. I mean, unless I was trying to go super lightweight, super minimalist, super sleek, blah, blah, all that stuff, I don't think I have a gun set up with a red dot that doesn't have a magnifier behind it. Or, you know, like I've got a couple of oddball guns that have red dots on them and a magnifier like wouldn't actually physically like mm-hmm. fit and work. Yep. High point carbine, looking at you. Um, <laughs> Uzi Pro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but that is, that is, if you are in the red dot world, that's a great accessory. I mean, so... Simple to add, and you know, there's lots of ways you can have a mount. And this is the mount that comes with the Micro 3X, and it flips to the side. It's great. It's got a nice, like, retention system on it, whether it's on the side or up behind the optic. But I know all kinds of people make these super high speed, low drag magnifier mounts nowadays. But uh, I mean, flip that sucker up, and now you, now you got something pretty serious for seeing a little bit further. Yep, and even heights now. We, I mean, we we offer you know, shims and spacers that that bring the optic system up higher. Uh, yeah. D- is there a single optic on this table that's mounted at a standard height? I think your Razor, Liam, mm, is mounted at a fairly yeah, standard Yeah, it's pretty standard, 157. So one, oh, oh, 157. That's... Uh, no, sorry, 154. So it is pretty standard. 154. I haven't yeah. heard that name in years. Mm. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. But otherwise, you got the you got like the tall mount with the venom. Yeah, I got a one nine three here. Yeah, two one nine three. Like a two two four. What's this dot. mount with my uh, spark solar? Put me at one nine three. One nine three. One nine three. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. One nine three bros for life. Uh, you can even go even higher than that. Yeah. Jim, I am gonna ask since you didn't even think of the optic system as an accessory, what was your trinity? Sans the optic, then? Well, I didn't know. Mm. I didn't. I couldn't. I couldn't. Oh, come okay. Up, so I you didn't come pick up with the it. three. I had. A, I had an optics. I had an optics duality. <laughs> I don't know what you mean by that. Is that a du- du- I do put a. I do put a folder on my guns a lot. That's definitely not in like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thou shall have a folder. No, I'm not gonna be that guy. But I do like it's it. It's got to fold. I do like yep. it. Oh, that don't fold. It's not gonna go it's bang. Even, are you even being serious? Yeah. No, I don't. I just <laughs> I got a flashlight and I got a sling on this thing, yeah. and a can. How about that? Yeah, I like cans. Get cans. Cans are cool. Cans are cans awesome. are very cool. Yes. Yeah. I think I think the world has just come around more to like the idea of yes, it is unconstitutional and whatever that you have to go through the st- stupid process of getting a can but like I think I think that people have realized enough though that they're like I can either keep waiting around for someone to pass the thing that says okay you should be able to buy a can just like anything else like a like a you know uh, shaving cream but um, <laughs> but you Things know they're like well cans. okay I, I just I want to be able to use this in general but I mean so so much better shooting with them, I love it. Mm-hmm. I do fan. too, for sure. Fan. I am in the just shooting with suppressors. Kids love it. Everyone loves it. Oh, we just oh, so much better. We just yeah. went hunting with the mark, and it was just like I was the odd man out. You were the odd man out, but I just I felt no diff- ear pro. I was enjoying nature, listening to the birds tweeting. Bam. And all, yeah, right. <laughs> and then all I had was just a. <laughs> that I heard and I mean it was basically that loud and I could hear the impact on the Mm -hmm. deer and Mm -hmm. no ringing afterwards then I went right back to just listening to the birds yeah yeah I through years of not shooting with a can Jim I I don't hear the birds anymore right (laughs) there's one bird just going wee (laughs) <laughs> it just lives you in guys, your ear. Yeah. You hear that? I swear that bird is everywhere. It's like a <laughs> seagull or something. Gosh. Birds aren't real, though. So no, they're not. I was just about drones. To say that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> on the next episode. 
Yeah. yeah so I just got, like I said, I just got the opt- the accessories duality. Gotcha. These guys have a real trinity. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. 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 Yeah. Cool stuff. I like it. Chris, I was surprised. I thought FDE was going to be one of your holy trinity of accessories. <laughs> <laughs> that has been proven to enhance the overall lethality of the gun. So, but <laughs> I didn't want to seem dogmatic on that. So, yeah. But yes, FDE is important. <laughs> Get FDE, kids. FDE is Chris's whole personality. <laughs> yeah, I've, yeah. I chose a color and made it my personality. My identity, but, uh, so what, what's Sad Chris like? Oh, he's, he's like FDE. You know, yeah. Flat Dark Earth? So FDE. <laughs> That's him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I like it. No. Well, thanks, yeah. guys. Yeah. Good stuff here. It's been a lot of fun, yeah. Thank you. I like what we covered, and um, yeah, I still need some suppressors, Jim. Yes. You need a lot, Mark. I need, you I'm need to do some shooting. I'm playing edge. cannage. Mm-hmm. You need some cannage. You need, uh, uh, what else? I don't know. We talked about other stuff you need. but A lot of stuff. Those are some of the We did finally, the hey, after all, that, after all that time, we finally got you some ARs. Yeah. You know what I like about Mark? And Mark, we need to give Mark his flowers here. Okay. Mark went a long time, not never having owned an AR. Let's just get that. Let's clear the air of mm-hmm. that. But he just, he, you know, he had his preferences. He stayed in the bolt gun world, a lot of hunting, big hunting guy, if you weren't aware. <laughs> I've heard. And, uh, and finally, he got, you know, enough pressure to get an AR, but no. No, 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 no. Mark got three. Let's go. It's he was packed. Right well, like you said, they're all, magic for, they're all for different yeah. things. Trinity. Trinity. The Trinity. The Holy get, Trinity of ARs. You get to apply yeah. the Trinity to your Trinity. There you go. There you go. That's uh, another actually podcast that we should do. We should do what's the holy trinity of ARs to own, you know? Because you got to have your little shorty 300 blackout, maybe. You got your standard workaholic 14 and a halfer. And then you got your like, oh, SPR, now I'm going to be like, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah you I mean, it long, does. Long boy. It does make sense. And then, yeah, you got your long boy or, you know, your do all, like, hey. Your Bobby Lee swagger. It's time to go. <laughs> I can bring one. Which one, Which one is you it? grabbing? That's right. Mm. That's right. Which it's one you're grabbing? That's the episode's name right there. Which, Which one, one you're you know grabbing? What I, I like that. You know what I like? Yes. You know what I like about that, though, is that it requires all of us to bring three ARs to the podcast. Mm. I yeah, like that, We're going to need and a three bigger times, table. Three times yeah. four is 15, so there's going to be 15 here. But, Jim, you know how I make decisions when it's, like, go time. <laughs> And it's like, you, got, you can pick one. We got to go. I'm like, I don't, but because of this one, then bam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. The bad guy will kick in Mark's door and he'll be like the NPC that got like stuck in the you know, <laughs> connection. He'll be standing there. His controller, just be, like, his controller the died. Wall. Yeah. And then they're just going to walk up to him and just kind of like dome him real fast. <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> not. Hopefully oh my not. Gosh. But cool. All right. Well, I love it. Guys, thank you for this yeah. podcast. Yeah. And that sounds like we came up with another one. So that's fantastic as well. And well, so yeah. we'll uh we'll see you guys in a, security. in a little bit here when we, this on, table on is which even one when you grab in. More which decked one you're out grabbing. with ARs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. I like it. All right. Big Everybody, thank guys. you for listening. What's your holy trinity? You can pick three accessories. Are optics an accessory or is that just standard issue? like what Jim said. So let us know in the comments below. Happy hunting and shooting. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. There you have it, folks. Thank you very much for listening. As usual, give this video a like if you liked it. Comment something below and give us a subscribe to the Vortex Nation podcast channel. It would mean a lot to us. Also, why don't you give us a follow over on Instagram while you're at it, at Vortex Nation Podcast. We'd love to hear from you over there, and we'll keep you updated with all kinds of cool photos and videos from our adventures that we do here. Otherwise, we will see you on the next one. Thank you again. Happy hunting and shooting, everybody. Have a good one.